Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. Everybody's excited about generative AI these days, but sometimes the use cases are not so clear. So in this video, I'm going to show you a pragmatic, real-life generative AI scenario that you can probably use in your organization. And I mean text summarization. We have way too many documents. We don't have time to read all of them. And sometimes we just need uh, a one-line summary of those documents for maybe search or indexing or just for reference. And so here we're going to start from a language model and I'm gonna use a model from the T5 family. And we're gonna look at it locally and then we're going to fine tune it on a legal data set. And we're gonna see how well we can summarize complex legal documents. And you can certainly adapt the example to any other domain that you're interested with. Okay, let's get to work. The Flan T5 uh, family of models is, is really interesting. They come in different sizes. We'll, we'll look at those in a second. And they're really, really good uh, general purpose language models. They perform very well on a variety of tasks. So here I'm looking at the, the large size of the model, which is kind of, you know, a mid-sized model in that family. And uh, in reading the model card, we can see it's been, um, it's been trained on a variety of tasks uh, on uh, multiple languages. I think we see the list somewhere down there, yeah. So quite a few languages here. And it's a good it's a good starting point. You know, we find uh, a lot of customers have good success with those models. So I'm going to start from this one, okay? Um, and of course, I could I could evaluate it uh, in uh, in the inference widget here. But let's jump into a notebook straight away and see what this model is uh, is capable of. Um, so I'm running this on the notebook instance on SageMaker, but you could, have, of course, run it um, on any in any Jupyter environment. I will put a link to the code in the video description. OK, so let's just run the first few cells, install uh, the Transformers library. First, we're going to try the model locally. OK, and for reference here, uh, I, I wrote down the, um, the parameter count for different sizes, so the small version is 80 million, um, base is 250, large, which is the one I'm using, is 780 million. And then we have XL at 3 billion and XXL at 11 billion. So in general, I would recommend that you start small and uh, evaluate accuracy and then go up, um, just like for EC2 instances, right? Uh, when you're trying to right size, you need to run your app on a small instance and then go up if you need it. Uh, I think that's the better way to do it. So here I'm starting like halfway through the um, uh, the, the parameter size, um, it, but you could try 80 and, and 250. Maybe uh, maybe that would work well enough, right? So uh, we've uh, installed the transformers library. So let's just click on this. So again, using T5 large, we're going to create a pipeline object for summarization using this model. Okay, downloading the model. So you can see it's already, yeah, it's already, you know, three gigs, something. So, you know, pretty, pretty large model already. So hopefully it's going to work well. And then once we have our pipeline, we're going to try and summarize this bit of text uh, on the Eiffel Tower, which is really general purpose text coming from Wikipedia, right? And so we're summarizing this and we get a very good summary. Uh, you know, the Alpha Tower is the tallest freestanding structure in France. Right. Okay, that's that's a really good summary. So, you know, we, we can see, yes, uh, this uh, general purpose model works well for summaries, summarizing general purpose English text. So I guess the, the next step is, um, can we just go and deploy this uh, in the cloud and start experimenting maybe with real life data? Um, instead of working in the notebook. So we can very easily do that, actually. If we go back to the model page, click on Deploy, SageMaker, Summarization, AWS, 
we get uh, a code snippet that um, we can copy and paste in a notebook, right? So we don't even need to write uh, that code for deployment. So in the interest of time, I have done this already, okay? And I've uh, updated it for the latest Transformers version. So uh, yeah, let's just run this. Um, uh, yeah, we could literally just run this directly, okay? And while it's deploying, I can explain what we're doing here. So first, we're referencing the model ID on the hub. So we're deploying straight from the hub, which is really cool. And you can do this with uh, literally any model from the hub and the SageMaker SDK. Just point at the model like this, give the task name, and bam, okay? Then we create a hugging face model object from the SageMaker SDK, as you can see here. And obviously passing the model name here. And then we simply call deploy on that model uh, with the number of uh, instances that need to uh, that are needed to uh, back the endpoint. So I'll just go with one here and the instance type. Okay, and here I'm using a G5 instance, which is a, a small, cost-efficient uh, GPU instance on AWS. You could also use uh, CPU instances uh, if you're uh, not concerned with latency, uh, they will be they will be slower in this case. Uh, although we're working on optimizing that thing, but more on that later. Uh, so now for now, I think a small GPU will be just fine. Okay, so it's going to take a couple of uh, minutes to deploy. So I'll just pause the video and I'll be right back when the endpoint is ready. Okay, so now the endpoint has been deployed. Uh, we can certainly see it in the SageMaker console. Yep, it's in there. So now let's just go and invoke it, right? So we're going to first try to do the same text uh, as we've done locally. And, you know, sure enough, uh, we get a good result. We get the same result, actually. So now let's say, um, so now we have, you know, I guess the, we have the model in, uh, in our production environment, right? That was easy enough. And we could set up auto scaling and, and, and all that good stuff if you need it. Not for now. Now we could say, okay, now let's we could maybe we can pull some data from one of our backends, uh, and let's say we have legal data that we want to summarize. Okay, so here, here's a a, a blob of uh, legalese, right, in English, and so that model has been trained on a lot of English data. So hopefully, it's going to do a good job at summarizing legal text. So let's just run this prediction. And well, it's not a very good summary at all. Uh, I think in fact, it just gave us the, yeah, you know, it just gave us like the first sentence, you know, the name of the section, which, you know, you could argue is kind of what the document is about, but you know, this isn't really a summary um, in, in plain English, right? So, that's, you know, that's disappointing, right? But it doesn't mean that the model cannot do the job. Uh, it means that the, the model needs to be trained on generating summaries for this kind of legal document, okay? And so that's what we're gonna do. But first, of course, we want to delete the endpoint and uh, avoid unnecessary charges, right? Trust me, happens all the time. So now let's fine tune the model on legal documents in order to improve how it can summarize them, right? So first of all, we need data to do this. And maybe you have a data set already um, and that's great. Then you could, uh, you could do that and use that directly. But if you don't, you know, you can go and, and, and look for uh, legal data sets on the hub. And, uh, you know, you could use maybe the full text search and say, I don't know, you know summarization, uh, legal. Yeah, we can see, you know, we have, uh, and we only, we're only looking at data sets here. So it looks like we do have some, uh, some interesting starting points, right? Uh, definitely some, some things worth looking at here, the choice of data sets, right? Um, and the one I'm going to use is actually this one. It's called Billsum. 
It's an English language data set that contains uh, legal texts, texts or blobs, I guess you could call them. Pretty difficult to read. Um, they have a summary, which is, as you can see, still a bit long, right? And they have titles. And in fact, you know, that's probably what I'm interested in here. I really want a one-line summary of these documents. So I'm going to use this as the label, and I'm going to use this as the input, and we're, we'll just ignore the, the summary column. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try this. And this is a good way to save time, because we don't have to build our own data set. Okay, let's let's see how we do this. So, uh, well, we import the SageMaker SDK, we import the transformers and the datasets library from Hugging Face, and then we load the datasets, print it out. So about 19,000 training samples, about 3,000 validation samples. And this is, you know, this is a good number. We could probably get away with less. Um, and so that means, you know, if you have to, uh, you know, if you have a few thousands documents and if you have summaries for those, um, you're probably good to go. You know, you don't need millions of documents and that's the whole point of fine tuning, right? Uh, you need just a small quantity of data to, uh, to customize the model to your own needs. Uh, we do need to do a tiny bit of pre-processing. The model uh, expects an instruction, and in this case, the model, the instruction will be summarized. So we're simply going to add that prefix to the to the legal blob, right? So the input, as you can see here, will actually be summarize column, and then the text. Okay, and we tokenize that. Okay, and that's the model input. And we use the, as I've said, the one-liner uh, title as uh, as the label, and we tokenize that as well. And that's it, right? So model inputs, uh, you know, tokenized prefix plus blob as the input, and uh, and tokenized uh, title, which we use as the the summary. Okay. So then we run this on our data set. We apply it with the map function in one go. We could save the process data set to uh, avoid doing that again and again. And then the next step is to upload the data set to S3. That's where SageMaker expects it. So here I'm simply defining a few paths. Um, one for training, one for validation. Okay. And then thanks to the integration of our data sets library with S3, we can just save the, the data sets to disk with uh, S3 as the file system, right? So you don't need to mess with AWS APIs. You can save to S3 directly, which is nice, okay? And obviously we could reload from S3, just the same, uh, using load from disk, passing the S S3 uh, URI. And so now we're ready to train. So, um, uh, you know, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna go into every line <laughs> of the training script. Uh, we've seen this before. In a nutshell, and you've heard me say this uh, 10 million times uh, in the last few years, it's not difficult to adapt your training code for SageMaker, whether you use Scikit-Learn or PyTorch or Hugging Face, you know, it's always the same thing. Uh, you need to remember that this script will be invoked by SageMaker inside the training container as an actual script. So the it will be run as, you know, Python, myscript.py, and then command line arguments that correspond to the parameters for the training script. And so generally the only thing you have to do is add, you know, arg parse to the mix so that all your hyperparameters, as well as the location of the training set and the validation set can be passed as command line arguments. And that's really all there is to it, okay? And this is this feature is called script mode. And yes, the uh, AWS doc for script mode is still very bad, you know? Not sure why. Uh, I have uh, other videos on this channel where I walk you through script mode and how to adapt, uh, I think, a Keras example for SageMaker, but it's exactly the same process. So go and watch that. Uh, ask questions if you need to. But this is really what we need to do, right? And then the rest is really vanilla hugging face code. You can see I'm using the 
the high level uh, trainer and auto API for this, loading the model, loading the tokenizer, um, defining the training arguments, defining the trainer, and then calling train and saving the model. Okay. So you can take your vanilla hugging face code that runs on your laptop or, or on your virtual machine and adapt it in, I don't know, 15 minutes, um, maybe less to run on SageMaker. Okay. Script mode. So once we have this, um, we need to define the hyperparameters and these match, uh, the, the parameters that will be passed to the script as command line arguments. Okay. Um, so we're uh, defining a uh, single epoch and learning rate, etc., etc. I actually passed the model ID as a parameter so that you can reuse the script for different models. If you want to try maybe different sizes, uh, why not? Or, or compatible models, why not do that? And then uh, we create a hugging face estimator in the, uh, in the SageMaker SDK, passing the script. Uh, if you have dependencies, uh, let's say Python packages that you need to be installed in the in the in your environment. You can do that. You can just pass a, a requirement uh, file this way. Of course, the hyperparameters, uh, the transformers version I want, the PyTorch version I want, uh, the the Python version I want, and then obviously how much infrastructure I want to use. Right. So here, uh, you know, I'm going to leverage uh, a P3DN 24XL instance. Uh, a single one will do. And this one comes with eight NVIDIA GPUs. So you probably don't have that one uh, on your desk or, <laughs> or in the closet. And that's the whole point of using managed services. You can you know, go uh, as big as you want with instances because you're just going to use them for a few minutes. And then, of course, I'm enabling uh, distributed training uh, with the, the data parallel library uh, in, in SageMaker. Uh, which uh, which is a really high performance implementation of distributed training. So definitely want to do that here. Okay, and then I just call fit, passing the training, uh, the location of the training set, the location of the validation set, and off it goes. Okay, so it creates the instance, it downloads the data set from S3, it downloads the training container for Hugging Face, PyTorch 113, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then it gets everything going. Okay. So we have a long training log. So let's just go to the end of that. Okay. All the way down. Uh, then we can see, of course, we can see evaluation running here as well. We can see the generation stuff happening. And okay, uh, eventually the model is saved and the training uh, job ran for just about 30 minutes. Okay. And this is what you pay for. So you pay for 30 minutes of that instance type. We could configure spot instances, um, which I've done in other videos. I didn't want to do too much here, but of course uh, you would definitely want to use spot to reduce, uh, to reduce cost. Okay. Again, go look for spot instances video. Uh, you'll find that on the channel. If not, you can ask me. Okay. All right. And now we have the model in S3, right? So that's the model artifact. Uh, we could grab it and we could load it locally. It's just a, it's just a PyTorch model. But of course, we want to predict. So now I'm going to deploy this on a slightly larger instance. I'm using a, a P3 instance, a, more, a little more powerful than G5, because maybe I want to do you know, a little more uh, uh, scalable work. So deploying this. And then uh, let's look at one of the samples from the test data set. Okay, so here comes the, the legalese blob again, right? And you can see there, there's, got, there's formatting in there and there's, you know, like section, section numbers and it, we just leave everything there, right? Uh, the no cleaning. We just take this and, and, uh, and predict it, okay? And now uh, we just go and predict it, okay? And the summary we get is this, right? Which is much, much better than what we used to get with the, the vanilla model, right? So this is an actual sentence, okay? I'm still not sure what it really means, <laughs> but 
if I guess if you're a lawyer, you would know what that means, and um, and you would see that this is a good summary for this particular document. Okay, it's actually a, a very good English sentence, right? So there you go. That that shows how you can fine tune models in you know minutes. Uh, you know, thirty minutes for a large model like this is is really good. I mean, it means we can iterate many times in a single business day. We can try different data set combinations. We can try different hyperparameters. And, you know, we can get a lot of iterations done in a single day, right? And get quicker to a solution that's, you know, accurate enough and, and, and good enough to actually get deployed in production, okay? Um, of course, you could add your own data to the mix, but, you know, maybe not. Maybe if you end up trying this model on your own um, English language data, it's going to be just fine, right? Who knows? Uh, go and go and figure it out. Um, and of course, once we're done, let's not forget to delete the endpoint. All right, off it goes. Okay. Well, that's really what I wanted to show you: um, how to uh, very quickly work uh, and start from you know hub models, hub data sets, try them out, um, try them out locally, just like that in your notebook, you know, evaluate them on your own data, then very, very simply bring them to your production environment on AWS, right? By literally copying and pasting code that we provide, okay? And then if needed, fine tuning on SageMaker to get much better um, relevance or accuracy, so to speak, um, on your, uh, your domain-specific data, right? Well. That's what I wanted to tell you. So I hope this was useful. Feel free to ask questions. And uh, I have more videos coming. There's always more coming. And until next time, keep rocking.